So picture this, you're digging up a body for totally legal and not at all suspicious reasons. Maybe you're an archeologist. Maybe you're a forensic investigator. Maybe you're just nosy and you own a shovel. I mean, who am I to judge? I don't know your life. You open the coffin expecting one skeleton, but you see two, one large, one small. And then you realize this woman gave birth and she died. Pause, blink. And that's when your brain does a full 404 error code. Because how, why, who let that happen? And the answer is decomposition did. Nature said, you know what would be really messed up today and just followed through. Welcome to the horrifying, rare and very real phenomena of coffin births. When a pregnant person dies and their decomposing body actually expels the fetus from the womb, post-mortem, no warning, no epidural, just pressure, gas, and whatever cursed magic the human body has tucked away for its final party trick. And if you're thinking, that can't be real, that has to be an internet rumor. Lauren, stop lying to me. No, it's real, too real. I'm dead serious. Coffin births are actually one of the most common questions I get asked about, right up there with do bodies sit up in the coffin? No. Will my grandma fart at her funeral? Yes. Respectfully, yes. But today we're going full deep dive on the science, the history, the wildest documented cases, and why this absolutely disgusting phenomenon almost never happens in modern funeral homes like mine. So if you're new here, hi, I'm Lauren the Mortician. I hang out with dead people so you don't have to. And I make videos that explain all the morbid stuff your parents told you not to ask in public. If you've got a curious brain, a slightly broken mental compass, and a love of all things death adjacent, hit that subscribe button. We've got a lot to unpack today. So what the hell is a coffin birth? I'm so glad you asked. A coffin birth or more formally post-mortem fetal extrusion, say that five times fast, happens when a pregnant person dies and the gases from decomposition build up inside of the abdomen. That pressure continues to rise until in very rare cases, it pushes the fetus out of the uterus and through the vaginal canal. This typically happens between 48 to 72 hours after death if the body hasn't been embalmed, refrigerated, or autopsied. And to be clear, the fetus is usually already deceased. This isn't some twisted miracle. It's biology under pressure, a body collapsing in on itself and pushing out its contents in the process. So decomposition 101, let's break it down. Decomposition starts with autolysis. Cells digest themselves. Putrefaction, that is a big word, Putre putrefaction. Gut bacteria go full rave mode. They release gases, methane, hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide. That body starts puffing up like the world's most horrifying balloon. If a body is pregnant, the uterus is already enlarged and softened. Add gas pressure from the gut and you've got a setup where the vaginal canal becomes the path of least resistance. And when there's nowhere else for the pressure to go, it pushes outward. So the fetus is expelled, usually in silence, sometimes partially, sometimes fully, always heartbreakingly. So here's some historical cases that will ruin your appetite. So I hope you're not eating, but if you are, that's okay. Are you weird like me? Anyways, what better time to talk about morbid things than over a snack, a sweet treat? Anyways, 1551 Spanish Inquisition. A pregnant woman is hanged by church authorities, left suspended for hours, and according to witnesses, two infants fell from her body as it decomposed in the open air. Rapid bloating and trauma equals excessive accelerated putrif putrefaction. God, I hate that word, but it is what it is. And just like that, one of the earliest recorded coffin births in Western history. In 1650, Emmy Toplace in England, she was buried. Then grave attendants heard crying from her grave. They dig her up and find a baby alive. <sighs> That's probably a case of live burial, not a true coffin birth, if you will, but it haunted an entire town for generations. In 2010, Mola, Italy, archaeologists uncover a medieval grave, a woman's skeleton with a tiny fetal skeleton partially expelled between her legs. No surgical signs, no tools, just pressure and time. That's a coffin birth, old school edition. So why doesn't this happen much anymore? Let's fast forward to the 21st century. Here's why coffin births are almost extinct. Bodies are refrigerated right after death. Embalming halts bacterial spread and firms the tissues. Autopsies often remove 
remove internal organs entirely, including the uterus. C-sections are performed if there's any chance of saving the baby. So in a modern mortuary setting, a pregnant decedent will be handled with urgency and care. The uterus never has a chance to become a decomposing pressure chamber. So unless someone dies, is left completely undiscovered and is very far along in pregnancy, you're not going to see this happen, especially not at the mortuary. So let's talk about modern coffin births. You'd think this was some medieval horror that disappeared with plague doctors, but modern forensic records say otherwise. Let's talk about a few real life modern day cases that prove coffin births do still happen. Lacey Peterson, 2002, she was eight months pregnant when she disappeared on Christmas Eve. Her husband, Scott Peterson, was later convicted of her murder. Months later, Lacey's body was found in the San Francisco Bay, badly decomposed, but her fetus, baby Connor, was found separately, just a mile away. Pathologists concluded that Connor had been expelled post-mortem. The pressure from decomposition, even underwater, forced the fetus out. The movement of the tide carried him away from Lacey. This wasn't divine intervention. It wasn't a secret birth. It was textbook coffin birth by water. Proof that even in submerged conditions, the human body still breaks down. And when it does, it doesn't ask permission. Panama, 2008, a 38-year-old pregnant woman vanishes. Four days later, her body is found in a field, decomposing, murdered, seven months pregnant. Her fetus is discovered outside of her body, partially delivered, but here's the kicker. The placenta is still inside of her. And that tells us everything. This wasn't labor, this wasn't birth. It was post-mortem gas pressure pushing the fetus through the softened birth canal and leaving the placenta behind. It's brutal, it's medically consistent, and it's deeply disturbing. Shanann Watts, 2018. She was 15 weeks pregnant when her husband, Chris Watts, another asshole, selfish asshole, killed her. He buried her in a shallow grave. Her body was discovered a few days later. During the autopsy, the fetus, a boy named Nico, was found to have been partially expelled post-mortem. 15 weeks isn't even halfway through a pregnancy, but it doesn't take much. With heat, shallow burial, and no embalming, nature doesn't wait. This wasn't labor, it was biology breaking down tissues and applying pressure in the cruelest way possible. So why these cases matter? Each of these cases is heartbreaking, but together they remind us coffin births aren't just creepy relics of the past. They still happen under very specific tragic conditions. None of these women were embalmed. All were left undiscovered or exposed. All were pregnant far enough along for the uterus to act like a pressurized balloon. This isn't horror fiction. This is death science. I know you're dying to know, could this ever happen in a funeral home? Short answer, most definitely not. In a funeral home setting, a pregnant body is either embalmed quickly or held under refrigeration. In cases involving fetal death, a C-section or an autopsy is often performed, like 99.9% .9 of the time, because it's typically a tragic death, unless cancer was involved. There's so many scenarios, but I've worked in this field for years and I've never seen a coffin birth. I've never even heard a colleague say they have. Could it happen? Technically, yes. Yes, but only under conditions no responsible mortuary would allow. It's easy to treat coffin births like a creepy curiosity, a medical oddity, but behind every case is a person, a family, a tragedy, Lacey, Shanann, Nico, Connor. These aren't just names, they were people. They had stories that ended in the worst way possible. Coffin births are not miracles. They are grim, involuntary acts of biology, and they remind us that death is not always still. Sometimes it fights back, and sometimes it speaks. So now you know. Coffin births are real. They're rare, yes, but they're also deeply human. They exist in the intersection of medicine, grief, and decomposition, where tragedy meets science science, and the body tells one final horrifying story. If you made it to the end of this video, congrats! You're officially morbid in all the right ways. <laughs> Drop a comment below, what's the most disturbing death fact you've ever learned? Better yet, what do you want me to cover next? I would love to know, I'm dying to know. What would you want me to cover next? Hit that like button, share this with someone who's just a little too into criminal minds, and make sure you're subscribed for more real talk about death, decay, and everything in between. Because even in death, the body has a lot to say. All right, love you, bye-bye. Dun, 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. Okay, that's it. That's all I got.
and I'm not sure, but this might be a in loving memory of my pooch video. This is Bailey. She's not feeling so good. She's going to be 15 on June 30th, and the vet told me that her kidneys are shutting down, and I hate that because this is my baby. Yeah, I love you. I don't really know I'm supposed to do this without you, but she's tired. So I just wanted you to say hi to her because she's my baby. Okay, we love you. And I love you.